If you were to ask a random person on the street who the Tyrannosaurus Rex had the most beef with, there is a fair chance they would say Spinosaurus. This is largely due to Jurassic Park 3, which showed a Spinosaurus offing a T-Rex. And because most people are under the assumption that dinosaurs shown in Jurassic Park actually live together, it's become somewhat common for people to think that Spinosaurus and T-Rex had death battles on the regular. Also, now that we have this movie, some will think Giganotosaurus was rumbling with the T-Rex as well. However, neither ever saw the Tyrant King, nor even came close to, seeing that they were separated by, well, millions of years. In reality, T-Rex's true nemesis wasn't a theropod at all. Rather, a herbivore, which to date is the only known animal to have ever caused injury to a T-Rex. This was the Triceratops. If you have any interest at all in dinosaurs or paleontology, this name should ring many bells, as over time it has become an icon itself thanks to its unique appearance and mighty size. Yet ironically, despite having a famous name, it didn't even start out being called Triceratops, due to a major misclassification, as paleontologists first thought it was a mammal of all things. This happened after a pair of brow horns were discovered in 1887 within Colorado. They were eventually sent to famed paleontologist Othniel Marsh, who believed that these horns belonged not to a dinosaur but to an ancient bison who hailed from the Pliocene and was unique in both shape and size. He dubbed this so-called bison, Bison alticornis, and left it at that. One reason why he may have done this is that at the time, no one knew Ceratopsian dinosaurs even existed, a discovery that would actually come just one year after the brow horns were unearthed when the same paleontologist introduced the world to Ceratops, the first horned dinosaur. Within the same year, another monumental event occurred, when a cowboy stumbled upon a monstrous skull sticking out of a ravine. It, like other horned dinosaur remains, were sent to Marsh, who designated them as a brand new Ceratops species. For one more year after this, nothing really changed. Until, that is, by sheer luck, a well-preserved skull that matched the one belonging to this so-called new Ceratops was located. The only difference in this skull was that it had all of its horns, which amounted to three, leading Marsh to finally acknowledge that the new Ceratops species and his bison were not only all the same animal, but also a completely new genus of horned dinosaur, which he aptly named Triceratops, meaning the three-horned face. Its discovery was a huge deal, not only because of the press it generated, but also the role it played in dinosaur classification, with the major group Ceratopsia being classified as all marginocephalians more closely related to Triceratops than to Pachycephalosaurus. Within this group, Triceratops is thought to fall under the Ceratopsidae family, and more specifically, the Triceratopsini tribe, where it is joined by its closest relative, the contemporary Taurosaurus. Outside of classification, this new dinosaur was a massive hit thanks to its giant skull and strange horns. Plus it helped that new formations with loads of specimens like Hell Creek were being discovered, which also led to the realization that there had once been more than one species. And since the 19th century, over 15 species have been described, but only two are considered valid today, Triceratops horridus and Triceratops prorsus. From a distance, both would have looked superficially the same, yet they did have their differences with Horridus typically having a longer snout and shorter nasal horn, while Prorsus had the opposite, a shorter snout yet longer nasal horn. Although, one area that they were very similar in was size. Technically, the largest known specimen, dubbed Big John, belonged to a Horridus, thus giving them a slight edge. But in the grand scheme of things, both species were absolute units. An adult Triceratops was among the largest non-sauropods of their time ranging anywhere from 8 to 9 meters or 26 to 30 feet in length, while weighing on average between 6 and 10 tons. Exceptionally large individuals were even bigger, possibly tipping the scales at 12 tons, making them heavier than the Tyrannosaurus itself and a contender for the largest Ceratopsian of all time. To give a little perspective on how incredibly heavy this is, a 12-ton Triceratops would be equal to 6 average-sized cars or 120 American men. No doubt this kind of size made matured adults fairly safe within their environments. But because Triceratops lived during the age of dinosaurs, and specifically alongside one of the largest theropods we know of, size alone sometimes wasn't enough, and in turn it had evolved some pretty powerful defenses, one of which was its bones. Many Ceratopsians had robust builds, yet Triceratops was particularly sturdy, having bones that were far more thickened than what's normally seen in dinosaurs. 
And this is nicely demonstrated when you compare Triceratops femur against a femur belonging to an exceptionally large African elephant. Such robustness would have given it a level of protection against injury and was further enhanced by its position, since it had a low down body and therefore lower center of gravity. However, not even remarkably thick bones came close to topping the Triceratops ultimate defense, which was pretty hard to miss, its giant skull. Triceratops possessed one massive head that can make up more than one third of a specimen's total length, with the largest recorded skulls being 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet long making them among the largest skulls of any terrestrial animal, despite it not being a contender for the title of the largest land animal overall. One reason its head was so big was thanks to a widened frill at the top that likely had a multifunctional role, playing a part in both courtship display, where it might have been colored, as well as lending a massive hand in defense against large predators. There is fairly solid evidence that backs the idea of the frill acting as a defensive tool, as it did cover the neck, a highly vulnerable area, and was made up of fibrolamellar bone, a special type of bone that is known to rapidly heal once damaged and has the ability to regrow within a short amount of time. The sheer size of the frill may have also played a part in preventing successful attacks, as it could have acted as a form of intimidation. But if the frill failed, the Triceratops had one more trick to take out aggressors, its legendary horns. These weapons need no introduction as they are the Triceratops' signature feature and is attributed greatly to its fierce reputation, and rightfully so, considering that all three horns were exceptionally sharp and long, with the two situated above its eyes being the largest, sometimes measuring 3.77 feet or 1.15 meters long, equal to the length of two rhino horns stacked on top of one another. And this isn't even taking into account that most paleontologists are certain that in life, Triceratops' horns were covered in sheaths of keratin, as seen in modern day mammals, implying that they were actually even bigger. Over the years, numerous ideas on the function of these horns have been proposed, with the most popular one being that they were used to combat T-Rex. However, there is immense debate over this claim, and a typically more accepted one is that the horns were mainly designed for battle, but not battle against theropods, but rather with its own kind. These intraspecific duels would have been savage, with Triceratops charging at high speeds and tussling about with their horns interlocked. Fights most likely occurred over mating rights or territory, and studies have found that such combat was the rule, not the exception, as a review of Triceratops skulls found that 14% had injuries to the head itself that matched what you would expect from a horn piercing a skull. Even the most famous Triceratops specimen, Big John, didn't escape the brutal lifestyle that these Ceratopsians lived as his skull had a gaping hole in the frill which is thought to have come from a rival, and probably also ended up killing him after the wound became infected. Clearly, despite being portrayed as typically chill herbivores, Triceratops could be quite ferocious with their horns, and coupled with their frill and size, they were one tough cookie, even by Cretaceous standards. So fierce in fact, that they would occasionally use their weapons and defenses against their only known predator, the Tyrannosaurus. At the time, the Tyrant King was the only carnivore large enough to pose a threat to mature Triceratops. And we do know that predation definitely happened, with certain specimens bearing damage to the skull and body that could have only come from a Rex's tooth. However, unlike what most people probably think, the battles between these two were not always one-sided, and to date, Triceratops remains the only dinosaur, or animal for that matter, known to have injured a T-Rex through fossil remains. The most clear case of this is the fossil known as the dueling dinosaurs, an extraordinary specimen that consists of a juvenile T-Rex and an adult Triceratops entangled together in death. It is believed that the two hadn't killed each other at the same time, but rather died from external forces, but from what is currently unknown. Regardless, both were banged up, with the T-Rex actually bearing most of the damage, as the majority of its teeth were shattered, its finger broken, and skull cracked while the Triceratops just had a tooth in it. Because the Tyrannosaurus was so damaged and a juvenile, some speculate that it was the Triceratops who had been the attacker, albeit this is heavily debated. And interestingly enough, another case of potential Triceratops on T-Rex violence may have been again the result of an aggressive Triceratops, a large adult T-Rex, dubbed Lee Rex, which was 40 feet or 12 meters long, has an interesting hole to the back of its left femur which resembles a puncture wound. Because of the shape and size of the injury, certain paleontologists believe that a large ceratopsian, 
likely a triceratops due to the area where the theropod was found, rammed the T-Rex from the back as it was standing up, indicating a sneak attack. A true prehistoric case of call the ambulance, but not for me. Furthermore, other paleontologists like Peter Dotson believe that in a fair direct confrontation between a bull triceratops and T-Rex, the fight was actually more in favor of the triceratops. Naturally, many disagree with this take, but whatever the case, it still stands that Triceratops was well equipped and pretty terrifying in its own way, becoming even more terrifying when you take a peek into its mouth. Now, as you probably know, the Triceratops was a herbivore, so it didn't have freakishly sharp or large teeth, but it did have an unnerving amount of teeth overall. Like many other herbivorous dinosaurs, its teeth were smaller and arranged in dental batteries that allowed it to shear through tough vegetation. In adults, these batteries could have amounted to over 800 teeth at once, more than 25 times the amount of teeth we humans have. Triceratops also had a beak that aided in its feeding, with the common idea being that it was used to tenderly strip and pluck leaves. And because Triceratops had a low down body, paleontologists believed that its diet consisted of a mix of cycads, ferns, and palms, which had either access directly at ground level or when it couldn't, it would use its giant body to force the plants to the ground. Such a tactic wasn't special among large herbivores at the time, yet Triceratops as a package was special, and this is reflected by its sheer dominance within its ecosystem, often being by far the most abundant animal around, sometimes accounting for 69% of the total dinosaur population within certain ecosystems, like the Upper Hell Creek Formation, where in total, Triceratops makes up 40% of all skeletons. And even in general, it's considered one of the most commonly found dinosaurs worldwide, a sign that it truly flourished during the late Cretaceous. With a dense population like this, you'd expect the Triceratops to have been a social creature, but according to most paleontologists, it actually preferred its personal space. While other horned dinosaurs have been found in large groups that can range anywhere from a couple hundred to a few thousand, the vast majority of Triceratops skeletons are found isolated, suggesting that adults spent most of their lives alone. This being said, there are a few cases where Triceratops have been found together, with the largest known group consisting of five individuals. So, nothing to write home about. However, it still shows that at least some live together, likely forming family units or sticking together in small groups while young, as another known fossil site consisted of three juveniles. The lack of remains suggesting large herds once again proves that this animal is no joke, and didn't have a hard time fending for itself in a world littered with other dinosaurs, which included Edmontosaurus, Taurosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, Ornithomimus, Anzu, Draco Rex, Alamosaurus, and Struthiomimus. Meanwhile, predators consisted of the T Rex, of course, as well as Acheroraptor, Dakotoraptor, Trudontids and the non-dinosaur Borealisuchus, Champsosaurus, and Brachychampsa. Other non-dinosaurs included a variety of turtles, mammals, fish, snakes, amphibians, insects, and pterosaurs. The reason why there was so much life around Triceratops is that it typically lived in lush subtropical forests that were covered by swamps, lakes, and rivers, allowing for an abundance of life, the most famous of which was the Hell Creek Formation where Triceratops could have easily been spotted on the regular anytime from 68 to 66 million years ago. Sadly though, not even its near perfect adaptations that allowed it to be a dominating force would help it survive. Because, as you all probably know, the Triceratops is one of the unlucky few dinosaurs who were around for the KT extinction event that ended both it and the T-Rex, finally settling their ancient beef. Interestingly, Triceratops was possibly the last one standing between the two. As for now, a Triceratops found 13 centimeters above the KPG boundary is considered the youngest dinosaur known to science, one last achievement for this prehistoric icon. But the Triceratops wasn't the only animal back then that the T-Rex was wary of, as there once existed an animal that even the T-Rex has never been found to attack. And if you want to hear more about that, Check out the video I made recently about the only dinosaur the T-Rex was afraid of. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching, and until next time on Extinct Zoo.